Today, I'm here to talk about Bitcoin, because we're back, back on top of everybody's mind since Elon Musk jumped in. And we're back because we're in that period again, in a bull cycle, so new all-time highs. Uh, right now, at the time of recording, one Bitcoin is at almost $57,000. But that's not what I want to talk about. I'm not here to give you price predictions or trading advice or anything like that. I want to take the opportunity and talk about the future of money and why I believe Bitcoin is interesting from that perspective. Um, first of all, I did record a video about this back um, with the last hype in December 2017. Um, it's in Swedish with subtitles, but um, well, anyhow, you might want to check it out just to get a sense of how right I was or how wrong you think I was, um, what I missed three years ago. It uh, might be a good way to decide if you have any reason at all to believe what I'm saying today. So what about today? Right now, there is a lot of talk about when to sell, how to time the top of this bull cycle. Uh, I mean, how high can it go? What do you think? 80, 90, 100, 200? But if you follow me, by now you know I like to talk about success in the future as not a result of predictions. It's about how well you understand the now. Um, what problems do we need to address problems do we have to solve right now and what opportunities are there now so let's ask ourselves uh, these two questions in regards to bitcoin instead of just uh, looking back in charts uh, looking um, to compare prices bitcoin holders i believe should realize that right now this asset has taken one more step towards mass adoption so um we have moved from uh, a wild card to uh, possible and now coming close at least to being a probable scenario for how to store wealth in the future. How to store wealth? Are you crazy? I know some of you are thinking like that. Big Bitcoin is so volatile. Um, it's way too volatile to trust as a store of value. We hear that all the time. This is a perfect example of of how to study the now. This network has been running 24-7 for more than 10 years now. Never glitch or hack. And it's up 200% per average per year. So it's only volatile if you have a short-term perspective. If Bitcoin holders start to think about it like that, about the now, instead of um, just comparing prices, looking left in charts, they wouldn't think a second about selling. And what about the ones who don't have any Bitcoin? I mean, is it too late to get in? Again, let's try to understand the now. Um, what's the problem we need to solve? I mean, if we don't have a problem, we don't need new opportunities. So, of course, there are many problems, but I'll address one, a big one. Um, it looks like this. The US dollar um, and other fiat currencies, of course. But, but the US dollar is the reserve currency of the world. And this one here is not holding up as a good store of value. Yeah. You, can, you can think like this. You can think of money as technology. Technology that can help us solve some problems. Uh, like how to make transactions smooth on a market. How to communicate price. And how to store value. And this one here did a good job. The US dollar worked very well for all these things for a long time now. But the last decade... Ever since the financial crisis of 12, 13 years ago, trust in this one started to decline. And as you know, in the end, this is nothing but, well, a piece of paper, maybe some coronavirus on it, but this is trust. Trust is the only reason that this is worth more than this. And the reason we lose faith and trust in this is because the ones in charge, well, not only did they tell us, that they can print as much as they want uh, and like, but they are doing it as we speak. When you hear about it in the news, it's, um, it's referred to as stimulus. So you will read words and hear things like uh, negative interest rates or lower interest rates or quantitative easings and lower taxes. It all means the same. The government is spending money. And it's not like when you and I spend money. I mean, we need money to spend money, but they told us that they can print as much as they need. 
So that that's basically what it means. When they say we will do whatever it takes, uh, they will print more of this. And that's what they have been doing for more than 10 years now. Uh, this did not start with a pandemic. I mean, think about it. They say the financial crisis was over in 2009. Well, if you have a look, the US ran a budget deficit every year since then. So they have tripled the debt between 2008 and 2020 when the pandemic hit. So forget about the old-fashioned school of economics that you save for a rainy day during good times. I mean, the US and thereby the global economy is totally addicted to spending. And as a result, uh, the US debt now is soon going to hit the, the $30 trillion mark. And as I said, that's three times the size of the debt that they had back in 2008. Well, but more money to the people, I mean, then they have more to spend and keep the wheels going. Isn't that what we need? Well, as you know, these newly added 20 trillion, they trickled up. So very few um, people ending up getting any. And if you want to see where it, where it all went, uh, well, check the stock market. Because the ones who did get it, of course, they didn't want to keep it. Remember, I told you, this is not a good store of value anymore. The, um, I mean, if the ones who are in charge tell me that they are printing more all the time, of course, I don't want this. I want to change it for something else. I mean, you see why this is a problem. As soon as a central banker says, we will do whatever it takes, there are no limits. As soon as we hear that, the ones who have this We'll start to look for other options. We'll trade this for, for something scarce. Trade it for stocks, real estate, gold, or maybe a new technology. Well, basically anything to not, you know, being stuck with this. The purchasing power of this will go down in the future. We know that. We fully expected this to be worth less and worth less. Worth un until worthless. <laughs> you know what I mean? So then that means that, yes, this technology still works to communicate price and to make transactions smooth on the market. But it no longer works as a store of value. Sure, I want some of this. I want some change for my day-to-day -day transactions, but not more. I mean, as little as possible. It's just like um, when you travel. Remember that back in the days? You travel, you get some, some local currency to keep it running a few days. Not more, because you know keeping this will cost you. So that's a problem. The dollar, uh, the euro, um, our fiat currencies, they don't work as a good store of value anymore. Now a technology like Bitcoin could be an opportunity to solve that problem. I mean, it is unique since the rules of supply and demand only applies to one side. I mean, no one can do anything about supply, no matter what happens to demand. Think about it. If, if the price of gold went up, skyrocketed, like 10,000% overnight, there would be a lot of new gold mining companies being born tomorrow and the, and the weeks ahead. If the price of Bitcoin, if, like they say, if it goes to the moon, still nothing will happen to supply. There are more millionaires in the world, um, dollar millionaires, than there are Bitcoin. That's another mind-blowing fact. So no matter what happens, it's not even possible for, for all the world's millionaires to become a, a whole coiner. I don't know if you trust Bitcoin. Um, it's still very early. But as I said, the average so far, uh, the average return over the last 10 years was 200% per year. And it's decentralized just like the internet. So anyone in the world have access. Again, this is not a prediction. Uh, I just gave you an example. I told you about one problem we face. Trust in, in the US dollar, or fiat currencies, is going down. And a possible solution. I mean, if you change your dollar for a Bitcoin and start to realize that I should never sell. I mean, I can borrow dollars with my Bitcoin as a security. Uh, and that way I can keep my Bitcoin because 
that store of value will get me richer over time, not poorer. Um, and the reward will be that I can pay my interest rate on, on the loans. So then maybe we'll see a, a new behavior in the market where people um, have a good store of value that make them richer over time. And they can spend money having that store of value, just like real estate or whatever. What do, what do you think? Um, you have um, anything to add or questions or, uh, well, feel free to, to join me. Do you think we should do more of this? Talk about the future of money or Bitcoin? Um, please tell me in the comments and hit subscribe if you didn't already. And see you in the future. <laughs>